Triangles are like the superheroes of structural design. They're strong, rigid, and can handle a lot of stress without buckling or bending out of shape. It's all about that even load distribution. So whether you're building a bridge, a skyscraper, or maybe even something for outer space, I can assure you that you'll see plenty of triangles right there doing their thing to keep everything stable and secure. When I was an architecture student, Singapore was still a young nation. 20 years later, I'm clearly not an architect, but Singapore has transformed. From low-rise buildings to gleaming skyscrapers, the relentless pulse of progress keeps the Singapore skyline ever-changing. I'm here to meet the people who are building and shaping our built environment. New Pongo Road? Huh? Since when was there a new Pongo Road? Pongo has changed so much. Look at that! Maybe they can tell me what's new in Pongo. There's a whole new district being constructed here in the northeast corner of Singapore, pioneering a smart city environment. Oh, thank you. I don't recognize this at all. Where exactly are we, Alina? We are here somewhere in this uh, plot of land over here. Alina is from Woha Architects, a company renowned for some of the most iconic buildings in Singapore. From the eco-luxurious Park Royal on Pickering, award-winning Kampong Admiralty, to the School of the Arts, which Alina personally left her mark on. Woha is also one of the driving forces behind the design of the new campus heart of the Singapore Institute of Technology and JTC Business Park. So what exactly has been completed? The new upcoming thing is the Pongo Digital District and that is the area over here where you can see the coloured blocks. We're looking at SIT, the Singapore Institute of Technology and it's a key anchor of the PDD. It's co-located with the JTC Business Parks and that's to foster collaboration between industry and academia. So JTC and SIT share facilities? They actually do. There's this bigger idea of what we call the space swap. We have designed it as an integrated three-dimensional master plan. All the vehicles and services are located within its subterranean levels. What that does is it frees up the ground levels and makes it fully walkable and lushly landscaped. The next thing we did was to raise the buildings and that creates an exciting uh, public realm that is open and inviting. Then at mid-level, the connectivity is established through this series of bridges that you see here. It links up the entire district and forms a continuous, what we call the collaboration loop. And then right on the rooftops of all the buildings, we have solar panels. So that is the key renewable energy source for this Green Rock Platinum District. Let's go. There are more things we can see. Look at this panoramic view. On the left side here is actually the SIT Campus Heart. And on the right is JPC's Business Park with the Campus Boulevard right in the middle. The red finned one here connects between the heart and the court, as well as JTC's business park. And you can see it's not just within SIT's buildings, but it always crosses over to JTC as well. That's the space, the boulevard that unites. Yes. So all of these facades that you see here are all precast modules. So it's designed deliberately to minimize heat gain into the building. Well, it's amazing to see how everything is connected. So Alina, tell me, why did you choose to become an architect? Initially, my interest started in interior design. But over the course of my career at Woha, I've really come to appreciate that the larger in scale you go, the greater the kind of impact you can have on civic contribution. Ultimately, it's to really try to improve the quality of life for people by designing social and sustainable buildings and cities. This whole PDD project is so well planned. But when you visit a site that's finished or nearly finished, you don't see all the hard work that's been put in. So who engineered these amazing bridges? That would be me. Hi, Fujiong. Nice Hi, to meet you. Life. Nice to meet you too. Fujiong is the structural engineer from Rembo, tirelessly bringing designs to life. With over a decade of experience, Fujiong has overseen projects ranging from 35-storey structures to Kango Kuma-designed masterpieces. 
The biggest challenge that we face for this project around the site would be the tight space constraints, particularly for the main collaboration loop bridge. Huh? You are skeptical because it's all completed right now. What makes you think I'm skeptical? <laughs> so, during construction, this area was all packed with construction activities. So basically, because everyone was building their own thing, Correct. it didn't give you enough space to engineer your bridge. That was exactly it. The bridge is quite long. It's sitting at about five storey high. What? Then why did you design such a difficult bridge to build? We were contemplating not having a bridge of this span, but, but having worked with the architect, Alina, we found that it was not giving us the kind of design intent that we want. You wanted like a gateway. Yes. In design aspect, that's the sort of challenge that we were looking at. We had some idea in terms of the structural material, which is steel, and also the kind of truss system that we wanted. So we carried out some field studies to find similar bridges that have been built around Singapore. There's this one just outside the King Albert Park MRT station. There's an overhead pedestrian bridge that crosses the Bukit Timah Road and the Dunyan Road. It straddles across the road by about eight lanes. So that's quite similar to what we have here. What other challenges did you face? So definitely, we could not fabricate this off-site in 60 meter length. Yeah, because there was absolutely no logistical way of us transporting the, the bridge. The collaboration bridge is 18 meters above ground and spans a distance of 124 meters. The team had to break it into eight 12 to 15 meter long segments. First, the truss was built and then the segments were lifted to a height, more than three times the height of a standard overhead pedestrian bridge. The final segment, spanning 40 meters, was the heaviest lift. But that's not even the hardest part. Can you see the pieces stuck together? There's one here, one here, and this one that's holding these two together. All right, on my left, this is one segment, and on my right is another segment of the bridge. How do you stitch them together? You use the bolts. So you can see the bolts all around you, actually. So how do you get those holes created so accurately? The engineering undertaking is made easier when there is a holistic adoption of technology across different stages of the work, such as beam 3D and computer-aided fabrication. This means that precise data for the measurement of the bridge can be input into the machines that fabricate the bridge segments. The complexity of this and the amount of work that goes into it, it's mind-blowing. So tell me, what is your Roman Empire? Many parts of this campus needed creative engineering thinking and solutions. Many people may not realize this, but engineering requires a lot of imagination and inventiveness. There's tremendous satisfaction in seeing something being built and enjoyed by many people for years and decades to come. These are no ordinary bridges. They not only link buildings, they connect academia with the real world. In just a few short decades, Pongol has evolved from a farming village to a thriving new town willed upon by the persistence and innovation of design practices by architects and planners, the seeds of this estate were planted more than a decade ago. And now, with the near completion of a brand new digital district by our builders and engineers, within which you'll find a brand new campus within a park, I'm excited to see how this new concept will change Singapore's built environment in the future.